right, so today's passage is brought to us from chapter 18, that is item 10 of the gospel. Explained by the Spiritus Doctrine, it is Luke 12, 47 through 48, in the chapter 18. Chapter 18 is entitled, um, Many are called, but, but few, or many are invited, but few are chosen. And the passage reads as follows. The servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everybody who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. And this is a rather simple passage for us to decipher. Of course, it's very powerful in its wording because Christ had to grab the attention of those of his era. But if you look past the surface of the message, we can easily break it down and try to figure out what it truly meant from a spiritual perspective and from the perspective of our own selves in life as we progress. The servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. What does this mean? This means that we have been given intelligence, we have the ability to read, to learn. We know the laws of God. We know the laws that are in the gospel of Christ. We know his example. We know that we ought to follow his example, that we ought to exercise these good things in order to be in accordance with the divine statutes. So if we know all of this, and yet we don't practice it, and we are aware of the things that we need to do, we are going to suffer the consequences of this much more so than if we did not know these things, if we were ignorant to them. Because the more awareness we have of the things that we need to do, the more responsibility we have. Thus, we have to be doing things that are right and in accordance with what Jesus taught us. Because we'll see in the following sentence, but, or phrase, but the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. If we are ignorant and we do not know the laws of Jesus, or the gospel itself, if we do not know how to behave, if we don't understand these things, if we have not achieved a level advanced yet enough to understand these things, then when we make errors, when we deviate from that righteous path, the consequences will not be as grave because we didn't know any better. A crude analogy could be one where you have a child and an adult. When a child makes a mistake, he's easily forgiven. Clearly, we're not going to give many blows to a child, if he makes a mistake, because we know that he doesn't understand things. He's still, quote-unquote, ignorant, but he's not guilty of the things he's doing. So we let things go. Whereas an adult who already has full control of his faculties, his limbs, his motor skills, his coordination, knows what he's doing. When he makes a mistake, he knows that there will be consequences to what he does. And this is what this means. When he does something wrong, the adult is going to suffer those severe consequences. The child isn't. So it's basically the same thing, but in a spiritual perspective. If we as spirits are advanced enough to have understood these things that are taught to us, we who are part of the spiritist movement, we who have these wonderful tools at our hands, at our disposal to study the interpretations of, the, of Jesus' teachings, and also sundry other interpretations that are available out there, we have to be able to know what we're doing because we have been given a great responsibility, and even greater so because we know that these teachings, what the true meaning of the te these teachings are. So if we err and we make mistakes, even the consequences are even worse for us. And we see this here. From everybody who has been given much, much will be demanded. And we've been given a lot. We have all of the tools that we need to succeed, all of the talents that we need in order to succeed, like the parable of the talents. The talents. Even if we've been given one, let us not bury it on the ground. Let us use it because God gave it to us. It is a blessing. We're responsible for it. Let's take advantage of it. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Much more will be asked, which is the same thing, basically. So we've been given all of these things. Let's put these things to work. Let's make it a habit, a natural behavior for us so that we may be in line with that divine frequency and not deviate from it so we don't suffer the consequences of our own errors, of our own mistakes, because the only people who, the only, er, the consequences are nothing more than, I lost my train of thought, nevertheless. There's a wonderful uh, 
text here from the Spirit Teachings, which is item 15, the last, pa the last paragraph from a spiritual friend, which was psychographed in 1862 in Bordeaux, and it was di dictated by a spiritual friend. This last paragraph offers a wonderful analogy to what I'm talking about here. And the paragraph reads, The son who doesn't cultivate the fields his father has left him will soon see them covered with weeds. So we've been given a, an ample field to cultivate, a vast field, and the tools that we need to cultivate this field. Is the father then taking away a harvest the son didn't look after? No, he isn't. If the seeds that would have produced the crop die because of the son's neglect, can the son rightfully blame his father because they didn't produce anything? He cannot. Instead of blaming his loss on the father who actually gave him a field ready for cultivation, the son should complain to the real instigator of his problems himself, us. Only we are the artifices of our own problems. We are the ar architects of our own edifice. Only after that, and armed with new energy and true regret for his mistake, can he go out to do the hard work ahead. Here's the parable of the prodigal son, the son who came back home to the father and was ready to do the work that he needed to do in order to progress, to advance. Through sheer willpower, he plows the hard land, sustained by heartfelt repentance and hope. Then he can sow the good seeds he has separated and water them with his love and compassion. Then God, the God of love and compassion, will give him more of that which he already has. So here we find this in the passage. <clears throat> and he will see his efforts crowned with success. One grain will produce a hundred, another a thousand. So we find this here. He who has been given much, much will be demanded. He who has been entrusted much, with much, much more will be asked. And the more we put these things to good use, the more good results we will have. They will fructify, which we see here. Um, so take courage, workers. Take up your harrows and your plows. Work with your hearts. Tear out the weeds. Sow the good seed the Lord has given you. And the dew of love will cause the fruits to grow. And how can we visualize this? I created a small chart or a graph to show this. It's very simple. As we gain awareness throughout our successive existences, as we advance, we have more responsibility, less ignorance. The least advanced we are, the more ignorance we have, the less responsibility we have because we have, the, we have less awareness of what we need to do. So this basically summarizes the passage itself in a very succinct way. So thank you so much. And that was today's gospel moment.